for authority. Alright. Alright, hi everybody and welcome to uh, this week's uh, Chaos DEI call. Uh, minutes are in the chat. Share my screen. Oh, you shared your screen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can share yours. I just. Oh, no, that's... So, today's question is longest flight or drive you've ever taken? You can pick. Yeah, flight, I couldn't. I think it's probably Philadelphia to Hong Kong, but. Yeah. Mine was. San Francisco to Sydney. Yeah, if you've been to Australia, that's going to win it every time. Wins it every single time. All right, drive from Minneapolis to Raleigh. That doesn't seem terrible. No, it's not. It was not terrible. I couldn't do it all in one day, but yeah, a bit too long for that. Um, peculiar. What is what is pH? To Lagos. That's it's hot. Ah, how long? How long was it? Ah, uh, was like eighteen hours. That's long. Was it eighteen? No. Yeah. No, not not up to eighteen. That was the twelve. Um, like fifteen hours because the roads were bad. Okay, so it was just slow going. Yes. Gotcha. All right, well, that is... <laughs> Precious, how long was your drive? Maybe a long way. It was like two days. We had two. to break at East Eat and then continue in the next morning. Yes. <laughs> Kevin Omaha to Miami definitely qualifies <laughs> down at anything at the tip of Florida is going to add a bunch of hours. That's certainly it. All right. Um, okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and, and get started? Um, I just wanted to note that in the community call yesterday, we just brought up the kind of our regular summer break. And so we're not going to have chaos meetings from August 15th through August 16th. That's a two week period from Monday to Friday. I'll let Elizabeth know to remove those things from the calendar, but we do this every year. We usually take a break in August and we take a break uh, also sometime around the new year. So there you go. That's what it is. Uh, so we do have, I was just looking at our um, our repository, and Sean, if you could click on the pull request first, the one, the below one, yeah. So this is a, <clears throat> a pull request that we have uh, from Precious, and really all that this is is just, it's doing that work to update, remember the bus factor, how that was renamed? Yes. Yeah, so that's what this is. So, so thanks for that. Um, we don't have a, a DCO on this. I'm not sure how. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> it's my solution there. So I assume we should just merge this then. Yes, exactly. If we could take care of that, I think there's really not much to talk about. So thank you for that, Precious. And then all good there and then yeah you could we just so we only had one pull request and one issue but i thought it was nice to attend to those and the issue is do you remember the inclusive naming work that we were doing i do yep and so that's what this issue is here and so if you scroll all the way down so basically the i'm sorry before you scroll down the the, the idea is is that there are um, from an inclusive naming perspective some words that we might want to consider uh, rewording throughout the chaos project and you can see a list of terms there kind of in that comment that i had as from i think it's the inclusive naming initiative that provided these yeah so 
Um, Elizabeth, it looks like did a website check and all good. And I know Augur is Augur has been updated for years. So, okay. Um, you know, I, do we want to, cause there's a comment that Elizabeth put there. You see that like DEI yeah. all yesterday. So Augur good Grimoire lab, um, Slack bots and badging bots. So it just looks like from a software perspective, it might be nice to just take a look at the use or the not use of these terms. And I think the question is only, I don't think that she's saying they have any of these issues. I think she's saying she has not checked them. Right. So the website was checked, I think, and is all yep. clear of the, mm -hmm. the words in question. Mm -hmm. And so if you're saying Augur has been checked, yeah, we, the only issue we ever had was when we originally created it to GitHub's default branch was master. Yes. Okay. And, but otherwise, those are not words we would ever use. <laughs> okay. Um, so with the Slack bots, are those in our chaos GitHub org? Yeah, I believe they are. Let me just jump over there. And how do I serve? I think if I just do bot. So that's yeah. right there. Uh, yeah. So staging is the default. There's main is so there's no issue there. Um, Can you search? I suppose it would just be a matter of searching for those words in this repo. But I would be really surprised if they existed. Yeah. Well, would somebody like to do a quick search? I see you're doing that right now. Yeah. Just, uh, wait. What about black? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the other words were. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, slave. And then, yeah. Tribe. Okay. I think we're good on the bots. Okay. Would anybody like to check this out on what are their other? Are there yeah, other... I mean, I, yeah. Other like repositories? Can you go to the list of repositories? Yeah. Um, In the org, the overall org that we're looking at here. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to think of a way to do this. Uh, yeah. So just if people are familiar with what we're doing here, we're trying to ensure that none of these terms are used throughout the chaos project. I think if I do, this would search within chaos. So if I search for these words. Okay, well, let's, could, would anybody, no, oh, there's some, okay. Well, and actually in the, <laughs> so the case, here is a case the, where the programming language uses the keyword abort. And I don't know that we can eliminate that because it is a keyword in JavaScript. Okay. Um, I don't know that we can't or that there's not an alternate method. Without going to JavaScript? But yeah, and going to these specific projects. Because, I, yeah, someone who knows this code and knows JavaScript would need to... I don't know if there's an alternative to that keyword or not. Okay. Out of my head. But that certainly looks like a programming language keyword in this case. Okay. Um, I'm going to put that in the comments. Yeah, okay, and under security, white white check mark is just a, these are, it's not saying white, black, it's just like it's actually a color of the check mark that's a standard in some of these things. Okay. There's no like uh, white, black thing here that's 
just literally a reasonable color. Would we? Would anybody here be interested in kind of taking a pass at some of the repositories, Sean? So we don't not aren't just doing it here. Yeah, right? yeah. I'll stop. <laughs> um, would anybody have an interest in taking a look at kind of at least those tier one words that I have right there again from the inclusive naming initiative? Scroll up just a little bit, Sean. Yeah. Just trying to identify if any of these exist anywhere in our repositories. No. Uh, so, yeah. what, what is this especially are you talking about? I didn't get it. Yeah, so basically the, the words that you can see on the screen right there. Yeah. You, you see those like abort and tribe no. and whitelist. Okay. Those, are, those are terms that were identified by the inclusive naming initiative, which is not part of the chaos project um, is terms that they recommend for removal. And using better terms, um, so just removing these words from. Any documentation, um, any software development, just really trying to identify where they are and trying to find alternative words in each of these situations. So we just kind of need to, to take a look at where these terms might be in the repository, in the chaos org. And then that's probably a first step. And then just making recommendations as to how they might be, might be changed. Does that make sense? Sure, I got it. Yeah, so I think it's kind of what Sean was doing is just searching the repository for these terms, sorry, searching the org for these is it seven terms and just kind of seeing where they're present and um, alternatives might be to replace those words. Okay, sure. Got it. Do you have an interest in that peculiar or are we just asking for clarity? Either way is fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I'll just say if people have an interest. I'm putting this in the issue. Okay. All right. I think we can move on. All right. Um, so peculiar. Did peculiar say she would work on that. What's that? Did peculiar say she'd work on that? Um, I can't remember. I don't know why. Peculiar. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to work yes. on that? Yes, sir. Yes. That's what I say. That'd be great. So maybe um, peculiar, do you have access to that issue? Sean, you're putting it on the pull request. Can you put it on the issue? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could just add comments to the issue as you find them and we can work from there. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the help, Peculiar. You're welcome. Um, all right, so honestly, we don't have a, a lot of agenda items. so I. I'm glad we got that PR merged and could at least restart that issue. Um, so I, just for the comms team, I just, I wanted to put it out there. We have talked about <clears throat> um, putting together maybe a social media post or asking the comms team to help us with a social media post around project batching. At the moment we have five projects that have done the project badging work. And I think it's uh, maybe in our interest to try to promote that a bit more. So I wrote a small block of text. You can see it says here at the chaos project under sample text at the bottom of page one. We'd like to encourage you to share your project's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts with your, your community and others to learn more how to do this, visit the chaos DEI badging project page. We'd love to hear from you. Something really simple <laughs> that maybe we could put out on LinkedIn 
or have the comms team put out. Um, I don't know what you all think about that really small text. If you read that, would you be like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Or is there anything you'd like to change on that text? This text right here. Thoughts? So that would, um, where would the sample text go on the <laughs> website or? Um, no, so it would, there's that in Slack, Elizabeth added that new widget at the top of um, the DEI working group. And I think at all working groups, and it's a widget that just says post something here for the comms team. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And so then it can be like, um, help us with putting together a blog post or help us with a social media post or help us, I don't know, something else like put together a presentation or something like that. Help us, the comms team help us as a working group do something in that regard. And so I was thinking this could just be like a LinkedIn post that chaos puts out. So the comms team would, you know, uh, okay, I see. It's a it's a link basically that gets oh it's well it's like a Slack thingy. Okay. And I'm guessing it messages the comms team is where it goes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And so I would just you see like where it says like what text do you want? This is where I would put that text. And I would just tag it as a social media post. See what I'm saying? Yeah, no. You know, just just something we've worked on a lot in the DEI working group, <laughs> and I would oh, love to. That's awesome. See, I'd love to see more people apply. You know, do the do the work around a DEI.md file and apply for a badge. Yeah. And so the question would be: Is that text? Do you think that's reasonable for a LinkedIn post? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's reasonable. Um, I think it's probably a broader, a wider discussion to have within the community, but in the United States and public discourse, DEI has been weaponized in horrible ways. And we, I, so that may be, I don't know, it's something we should talk about more broadly. I like the text just fine. Okay. So you don't see any problem with kind of saying the comms team. How about anybody else? Do you, does the text read okay to, to everybody else? Peculiar, Precious, Winifred, Toria? Yes. Yes, to me it's okay because since we have few uh, fewer people that organizations that have impact, yeah. it will be a way to let other, a lot of other communities and organizations also be aware of it. Perfect. And uh, get them come, come in and also get back. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Peculiar. And that is the intention, just to kind of raise awareness of, of this effort, um, just because there was so much good work done. And Precious, I saw your thumbs up. So cool. All right. All right, great. I'll get that posted just right after this meeting. That's super easy. Um, all right. Uh, Chaos Education Workshops. Uh, Okay, so I put that there. Perfect. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. So, um, Chaos Project, uh, Education Project has been on, and I want to appreciate some uh, contributors that have been writing scripts uh, by preparing the slide deck and recording the videos. So, um, for this one, is uh, we actually say that we are trying to deliver Kios education project in two ways, right? One is through the videos, which is just a few minutes uh, video recording. And then the other way is through workshops. So at this point, when I talked about workshop, I was wondering how can we get these workshop materials collected? Because I know 
and cares. We already have so many topics covered in care in cares come and several events about different topics in cures. So um so I'm thinking for like suggestion, how do we like how do you suggest we get uh my workshop materials uh together? My thought was like uh, if I could create issues on issue on education project to get people or speakers submit maybe the slide deck they've used in different workshop or different uh, kiosk come that way I would then go through and find out the topics they've covered and where topics that are not being covered. So uh, I was having that thought, so I'm bringing it here to get other people's thoughts up around that and then you know what to do. Is, is the idea peculiar to have um, uh, these sessions for people to learn how to do the education materials? Is that the workshop intent? No, no, okay, no. Uh, for people to know how to do or contribute to education, um, education projects i've already written a blog on that that right. will help people okay. how to contribute how to get involved and uh, be part of education project uh, contributing to the education project but this workshop is this is another way like de uh, delivering this kiosk education project um like just the video we have five minutes video that can help people um they can just get to youtube and then get look at it and get all the information they need, right? Then ask yeah. questions. But okay. then we are saying that we also want to deliver this uh, this education project via workshop where we can have like if a half day workshop, like get people like get to one on one. The benefit for workshop is that it's gonna be interactive, it's gonna be one on one and people will be able to see you and ask you questions, which is, will be quite different from the video. Video is just they interact with it at their own time, right? So in order for us to achieve that workshop part with where we have, like in conferences and summit, get people talk with them about the whole bunch of topic. I in order for us to do that. So I'm thinking that if I will start from collecting some topics that have been covered in different kiosks come, and then if I'm able to do that, I will be able to know, okay, these topics have been covered and this has not been covered. So those ones that have not been covered are topics we can use in do in for delivering girls education project in different summits or conferences and all that. So that's my point. So at okay. this point, I'm not asking if this my suggestion, if it's okay or if you have insight of how I can better do this. So Sean, this also, this stems from a conversation with Carpentries. Okay. And yeah, so, I think I missed that meeting. So Carpentries, <clears throat> and I'm probably not gonna quite get this right and peculiar, you can correct me where I'm wrong. Uh, okay. Is that, is that there are, there are workshops that people provide on particular topics, whatever those topics might be. And it's those... assumption.md file. You can get see what we have there. What do you want to look at, Peculiar? Okay. Don't worry, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So the idea is, is that the workshops are around a, a particular topic, whatever that topic might be. So that this would, are these the topics? Um, no, this is how Carpentries. So Carpentries will have okay. their own sets of topics. And so the discussion that we had with Carpentries is, is there really a workshop that people have developed around say Open Source 101? Like right. just getting involved in open source. And they said, not really. And so the discussion was, what if we could develop such a workshop? And it would be a workshop that we as chaos in our own meetings could run, but it's yeah. also a workshop that somebody else could run. You yeah. know, so they are starting a new community and they just wanna 
you know, kind of reach out to their member base about how to start getting involved in open source or they, it's an education, it's a, you know, like a university and they just want to reach out to, to students who may have an interest in getting involved in open source. So it'd be a workshop that kind of anybody could run given the agenda and given the proper material. Peculiar, did I get that right? Is that kind of how you're seeing sure. this? Sure. Yeah. Sure, you're correct. So does that help, Sean, or yeah, anybody? No, that makes that makes it much more clear. Yeah. So I think I put a couple things in here peculiar. Okay. For the minutes. So I, it made me think that maybe one of the first things that we could try to sort out is like what an agenda would look like for a half day workshop, you know, open source 101. Okay. And then from there, you know, we would have a, a couple different topics that are covered throughout the four hour workshop. And once we un identify what those topics are, um, then we could try to identify materials that would support it. Okay. So if we were to like, if we were to say, you know, like, I'll just say like eight to nine, like what would be a, if you were doing anybody open source 101 for people, like what would be the first story you would want to tell them, you know, like Sean, maybe when you're in class and people, are not familiar with open source. Like right. what is the first, like what's the first story you tell them? Well, I teach in a computer science department, so I don't have to introduce it to my students. For, I mean, they know what open source is in, in its distinction from proprietary software now, and maybe wasn't the case five years ago, but there's a greater awareness. Okay. I just, I describe it as a, I put it in the context of how software really gets built and whether you are contributing to open source or working at a company on something proprietary, the tools and processes that we use in these times are very, very similar, if not almost completely identical. And, and so I explain open source contributions as a way to demonstrate your capacity and also learn the software engineering processes that are necessary to build something. So, okay. So, um, that's helpful. Uh, peculiar or precious or Winifred, Toria, Hamza, I see you're here, Kevin, you know, like either, either like helping people, you know, step foot into open source for the first time or, um, you know, your own journey, you know, what were kind of those first things that you, um, that you had to encounter? In participating in open source anybody have thoughts on what those things might be for you or for others for me it's going to be what is open source okay I need to understand what it's all about before I can go in to do anything. Then which type of project can I be referred to as an open source project? Is it, was it like the projects that are available to you? Is that what um, you mean? No, I, I mean, like, with what, what I mean, in it, I said, what is open source? Got it. Okay. So next will be how to be part of it. Okay. Yes. Or how to contribute to the open source project. And then... Got it. And then next will be how to find a project that match my skill set. Gotcha. And how to make a PR. 
those. Gotcha. And, okay, I think that will come under how to contribute to open source projects. How to participate in open source projects. So that's how to do it. Okay. How to make my first, first PR in open source um, project. So like how to participate could be like socially and technically. <laughs> technically, yes. Okay. And I think socially is important, like how to how to join meetings. Or, yeah. How to join Slack, you know, like those kind of things too. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, this is great. So, I mean, that's that's three hours right there. So, I mean, if we did like, what is open source? How to participate in open source socially and technically, and how to find a project that matches your skill set. What are other people think? I think we could also add like a section to help you know why you should care in the first place anyway. Okay. And um. Probably also how to manage expectation. It's probably going to be on that the um social part of it. Okay. But yeah, because sometimes probably you join open source communities and some need to let people know that it's okay for your PR to not be accepted. It's okay for you to text somebody at the door and respond immediately. Everybody has lives. So just sort of like Okay. That's all fair. <laughs> yep. I like I'd that. Like, Tiny parts is just everybody know what to expect when you join. Okay, I added that. I, I put that. I put that at the end, like how to. I really like that, like managing expectations from the community and maybe for yourself. You know, like just joining a project is not gonna like immediately give you all the skills you need to get a job. <laughs> It's going to take yeah. time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, career and community. I like that. Mm, what do other people think? You can, I don't know if you can't, if you can't see my screen, the first hour is what is open source and why you should care. The second hour is how to participate with open source socially and technically. The third hour is how to find a project that matches your skill set. And the fourth hour is managing expectations, both for yourself and from the community. What do other people think about that? This is open source 101. Yeah. Peculiar, does this help? Yes, it does. Because then I was thinking, like, I think, uh, like, when you talk about materials, uh, like this one, can you see my screen? The how to yes. find a project that matches your skill set. I swear Ruth did something about this years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I remember that also. Um, so she, I think, I'm pretty sure she has a slide deck somewhere. Yes, I think I have, uh, I have that. Okay. Okay. And Precious, you have a podcast? Is I'm it on? Precious also have a podcast too. Is it a podcast on matching your skill set, Precious? No, I think how to find a project that matches your skill set, right, Precious? Okay. Cool. Generally on open source, okay. Oh, no, okay. Perfect. Hey, look, we're, <laughs> we're making progress, Peculiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think as part of like identifying this material, we'll have to think about how to get it kind of in workshop form for people. So like activities that, that could be run as part of that workshop too. You know, so like 
activities that could speak to say the podcast that Precious has or the slide deck that Ruth had put together, whatever it might be. Okay. 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 Precious, I got that. I'll put it in. Precious, can you do a PR on this to education project? Just send it as PR with a tag. That would be better. Oh, okay. Oh, so, no, okay. Perfect. Oh, it's added to the minute. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Perfect. Um, great. This is a great start. Anything else peculiar? Is this a good start for you? Sure. This is a good start for me. Perfect. Fantastic. All right. Um, so one more thing is like, is, uh, do I, how do I like get uh, the other topics that have been treated in chaos? Um, chaos, this and that. How do you do? How, yes, like I know Shane has speaking has, has delivered some topics on different chaos topics, and Matt, you have delivered some topic in different conferences. Yeah. You have slide deck and all that. So how I, to get to put those together so I can be able to sort them out? So my thought, maybe we could, um, once we kind of finalize on this general structure okay. or ideas. Okay. Um, I mean, it seems reasonable. We have such a well-connected community of people of just putting this in the general channel okay. and saying, does anybody have any material on any of these four topics? And if they do, maybe, hmm, like, would you want to just create like a, a folder where people could drop things or um, or maybe just a document where people could just drop pointers to like slides or talks they've given? Okay, I was thinking of raising an issue on GitHub. Yeah, we could, yeah, just open an issue and you could collect it in an issue, but we could put this out to, once the issue is created, we could yeah. put this out on the general channel and just say if anybody has material that they've talked about over the years on any of these four topics, like what is open source, why you should care, how to okay. participate with open source technically and socially, how to um, ensure that a project matches your skill set, and how to manage your expectations. You know, and if anybody has any content on any of those four issues, could you please, you know, just tag it as to which one it is associated with and put it in this issue, a link to it in the issue that will be created. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Anything else from folks on that one? All right. Well, thanks for the feedback. It was really great. All right. Uh, we, hey, everyone. Yeah, go ahead, Peculiar. Oh, you muted if you were going to say something. I can't hear you. No, I just said thank you, everyone. Oh, OK. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, we're at the end. So unless somebody has something to say, I think we'll call it a little bit early here. And again, really appreciate everybody's feedback. That was really great. It was nice to see everybody in a nice conversation. All right, Sean, you can stop sharing. Thank you, everybody. 
Thank you. Until next time. Good to see y'all. Okay, bye. bye.